This is not innovation, but this is. Let's talk about the Nothing Phone One. Khuda da, we are DHRME. Darn hippos, ravage my eggplants. The Nothing Phone gets a lot of things right, and really, the key is attention to detail. There is a certain refinement with the Nothing Phone One. Right from its branding to its packaging to the SIM ejector tool to the industrial design and build with the clear back, it's very clear that Nothing wants to position itself as the pirate in the phone industry, as Steve Jobs' Apple once was. How much they've succeeded? We'll come to that in a bit. So there are things about the Nothing phone that we really love. The first among those things is the experience of using the phone. It's been a few days since I switched to it as my daily driver, and there have been zero stutters, crashes, or anything else. What's also impressive is that they haven't given in to the temptation of adding bloatware or unnecessary apps so far. Three years of Android updates and four years of security updates is a good promise for all of us. And you know, time will tell if this holds. To us, it's very impressive that a two-year-old company can create a product like this in a very crowded smartphone market. It's clear that care and attention has gone into the software and the hardware here. Not all software features are a slam dunk, though. The launcher is nice, but it's basically fancy wallpapers and a couple of cool widgets, which actually didn't stand out against the wallpapers. Those frosted glass wallpapers are right out of the 80s. Keeping with the vintage theme, the ringtones are retro sounding as well. Look, I don't know about you guys, but I haven't enabled ringtones on my phone since forever. It's pretty much all vibration all the time, and the glyph interface. We save that for later. In terms of the phone itself, that transparent back is nice. The flat edges and lines are very reminiscent of newer squared off iPhones. Carl Pei's open admiration of Apple and basically not acknowledging any other phone shows where the inspiration comes from. Interestingly, when you lock the phone, there's a solitary circle for the fingerprint reader, which might be a tribute of sorts to the design of the iPhones with a Touch ID. The camera bump isn't huge. There's a bit of wobble when you lay it on the table, but nothing disconcerting. This is a mid-sized phone, and we were a bit surprised. Maybe we should have done more research on it. But this is not a one-hander, and it's not because of the length, but because of the width. Getting to the top left diagonal is near impossible. A big miss here is the IP rating. The phone one is a measly IP53, and it's the three number of that equation that's worrying. It's okay against sprays of water, but not splashes of water. So you'll need to be a bit careful when you're out in the rain or in wet environments. The 4500 milliamp hour battery did really well for me in real life use, and I was averaging close to five and a half hours of screen on time, which I think is a little over a day for me. This supports 33 watt fast charging, but in terms of the charger, there's nothing in the box. The whole punch front camera on the top left still bothers me, and I much prefer the symmetrical central alignment on the Galaxy S22 I used before. But that's a nitpick. Nothing also has very even bezels, which give it quite a premium look because making that actually involves folding part of the screen down inside the device. So this is something they've really splurged on. The vibration motor is nice, especially for typing. When it comes to notifications, we think they could be a bit stronger, especially if they're in a bag or if you have a looser pocket. But we're just nitpicking at this point. And considering this is a phone you would want to rock naked, the phone, not you. Please don't rock stuff naked. It's especially slippery. The phone, the phone is slippery. Rowan dropped it once when it slid out of his pocket, and luckily there were no dings or scratches on it. So it does feel like that premium feel is not just eye wash. The buttons are a bit too flush with the body. The fingerprint scanner was pretty good and very comparable to the Galaxy S22, which is a flagship model, until now at least. What doesn't look meh though is that screen. The smooth refresh rate and the very solid color reproduction are a joy to look at. The Full HD Plus screen is very dense and is going to please everyone but the most exacting pixel peepers. Where it falls a bit behind is at peak brightness. I mean, it's okay, but it's not going to beat your flagships. To give you an idea, if you're out on a sunny day and you're using polarized sunglasses, the screen is going to look very dim. The speakers also get plenty loud, very comparable to the Galaxy S22, but they sound tinny and are kind of distorted at higher volumes. Here's a sample. Listen for yourself.
Okay, now let's talk about that glyph interface. Look, this is how I, and I think most people, have learned to use their phones in the last decade or so that smartphones have become mainstream. When we want to use the phone, we look at its front. When we don't want to use it, we look at its back. Nothing wants you to unlearn all that because when you flip that phone, the nothing is still communicating and interacting with you. Not just that, while the glyph thing is well, very well thought out and very configurable, it can actually be socially undesirable in so many situations, like a movie theater or a dark room or a professional setting. Imagine this going off in the middle of a movie theater. In terms of utility, the glyphs can have custom patterns for specific ringtones that you can associate with specific contacts. But this is for now only for phone calls. I mean, I'm not sure about you, but I hardly ever use the cellular network to call people. It's mainly apps using VOIP that do the calling and that isn't supported here. So all calls from non-phone apps don't adhere to that contact specific calling. There's also an Easter egg for music visualization. We'll let you figure that one out on your own, but it can actually sync the glyph lights with the music you're playing, whether over Bluetooth or just on the phone. So that's pretty cool. But the most useful thing you can do with the glyphs is to assign different glyphs to different apps and even change the type based on specific notifications in the app. It's a bit hard to find though, since you don't access it from the glyph settings, but need to go into the app's notification settings. Shout out to The Verge for that tip. And as we said, this phone is slippery, so you're gonna need a case. What does that mean? That lovely nothing back with those lights, they're gonna be diffused, and over time, the case is gonna get dirty, and your lights are gonna look a bit meh. Since nothing's going for the whole ecosystem, if you're the proud owner of a nothing ear one, you'll be happy to know that you do get some of that ecosystem goodness. If you start off a game on your nothing phone one, your ear ones will automatically switch to a low latency mode. Pretty nice idea. More companies should do this. But not much else has changed and disappointingly doesn't sound any better than it did before. You're still listening in AAC and although it's very possible, we'd have liked to see more happening here. From hearing to seeing, let's get to the camera. With the main Sony IMX766 50 megapixel sensor, you know it's gonna be a mid-ranger unless nothing did something crazy with the processing and it does pretty much nothing. To give it credit, the colors aren't super poppy and do look quite accurate. Look, the cameras are goodish. Admittedly, I'm comparing the camera with the premium flagship, at least last year's premium flagship, the S22. But in almost every case, I like the S22's output better. The real compromises seem to me are the front-facing cameras, the wide-angle lens, low-light performance, and representation of skin color. In terms of video, the nothing maxes out at 4K 30 frames per second without HDR. With HDR, it goes down to 1080p. Recently, Nothing pushed an update to the phone with better ultra-wide camera performance. All the samples have been taken after this update. All right, we have stabilization on and I'm kind of moving both my arms the same way. So let's see how that works. All right, we have stabilization on and I'm kind of moving both my arms the same way. So let's see how that works. All right, I figured this would be a good test because I have some light streaming in here to the kitchen and I have the kitchen exhaust running. So we can check not only the video, but also the audio performance if it's canceling out the background sounds of this exhaust and it's focusing on my voice or not. So here we go, pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. 
All right, here's a test of the low light front facing camera. Um, this is a nothing phone over here and here I have the Samsung Galaxy S22. The front camera on the nothing seems to be a bit more noisy so far, but what do you guys think? So should you buy the nothing phone one? Well, if these fancy lights at the back grab your attention or throw you off, they really shouldn't because those lights are like the thumbnail on YouTube videos. They're made so that people click on the video. This is an entry point into buying the Nothing Phone 1. What really matters is if the video itself is worth watching. So what we're thinking is this. It's impressive that the Nothing Phone 1 has managed to put out a very solid device for a first attempt. The real success is not the glyphs, but the marketing and the rest of the product that they've made. They say smartphones are boring and maybe this is a step in the right direction to change that. But either way, they made a solid phone that looks good and performs well enough for most people. If you're someone who's thought, I don't want to spend too much money on a phone, but I want one that looks great and does the basics well, instead of choosing from the plethora of the Samsung A-series mid-rangers or one of the numerous Chinese Android phones out there, nothing saying, we got you. So the real innovation is not this, but the price. They've made a mid-range phone that everyone is talking about and that's nothing to sneeze at. Stay tuned for full reviews with video, photo, and audio samples of the Nothing Phone 1 compared to the Pixel 6a and whatever phone you want to know about. You've been getting over the hype, and we've been DHRME. Namaste. As Steve Jobs' apples. <coughs> so this...